ये उनके लिए सोचने की बात है जो इस बिल का समर्थन कर, कर रहे हैं या समर्थन करने की घोषणा कर दी है जो आज दिल्ली सरकार के साथ हैं शायद कभी आपके पास भी जल्द ही आपके साथ भी ऐसा ही हो सकता है सबका नंबर आ सकता है उस वक्त जब नंबर आएगा तो आपको सिर्फ याद आएंगे मार्टिन न्यूमेलर के वर्ड्स वो पुराने जाने माने शब्द हैं लेकिन मैं दोहरा रहा हूं फर्स्ट दे केम फॉर द सोशलिस्ट एंड आई डिड नॉट स्पीक आउट बिकॉज आई वॉज नॉट अ सोशलिस्ट देन दे केम फॉर द ट्रेड यूनियनिस्ट एंड आई डिड नॉट स्पीक आउट बिकॉज आई वॉज नॉट अ ट्रेड यूनियनिस्ट देन दे केम फॉर द जूज and i did not speak out because i am not a jew yes. then they came for me and for you yes. and there was no one left to yes. speak for us yes. friends friends what does let me let me start with my two heads what does this bill do textually first and secondly what is the consequence of that text let me deal with these two aspects first doston ye bill ek civil services authority banata hai और उसको व्यापक शक्तियां देता है सुझाव देने की हर नियुक्ति हर स्थानांतरण हर चीज के बारे में ग्रेड ए अफसर से लेके दानिक अफसर तक व्यापक है विशाल है कौन किसी और की सरकार में वित्त का सेक्रेटरी बनेगा कौन पीडब्ल्यूडी का सेक्रेटरी बनेगा उनके बीच में अदला बदली कब और कैसे होगी ये माननीय एल जी करेंगे की चुनावित सरकार ये बड़े स्पष्ट प्रावधान है मैं अभी आपको प्रावधान के नंबर नहीं दे रहा हूं दूसरा जितने भी सतर्कता के अधिकार क्षेत्र हैं और जितने भी नॉन सतर्कता नॉन विजिलेंस वो सभी केसेस अनुशासनहीनता के विषय में सब इस अथॉरिटी में आएंगे सुझाव के लिए और माननीय एल के पास निर्णय के लिए इसका उद्देश्य बड़ा स्पष्ट है उद्देश्य है एक भय और हिस्टे, हिस्टेरिया का माहौल बनाना एक खौफ पैदा करना जिससे कि आप इन सभी सचिवों को कंट्रोल कर सके जो कि दिख रहा है दिन प्रतिदिन तीसरा ये अथॉरिटी में तीन व्यक्ति हैं चीफ सेक्रेटरी प्रिंसिपल सेक्रेटरी और मुख्यमंत्री और मुख्यमंत्री को बहुत बड़ा औहदा दिया है अध्यक्ष बनाया गया है यह अजीब सा अध्यक्ष है दोस्तों कोरम है दो लोगों का यह एक चेयरमैन है बिना चेयर के मैंने वैश्विक और भूगोलिक रूप से आज तक कहीं नहीं देखा मेरे सीमित अनुभव में कि एक चुनावित चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव दो सचिवों के नीचे आएगा ये दो सचिव बैठ के निर्णय करेंगे ये दो सचिव बैठ के निर्णय करेंगे और वो मुख्यमंत्री वहां खड़ा होगा देखता रहेगा चुप्पी साधेगा या अपना डिसेंट नोट करवाएगा और उसके बाद और ये सब प्रावधान है एक एक चीज में जो बोल रहा हूं प्रावधान है उसके बाद ये निर्णय और सुझाव जाएगा पहले सुपर सीएम के पास और उसके बाद सुपर बॉस जो हमारे सामने बैठे हैं माननीय गृह मंत्री ये सब गृह मंत्रालय में आएगा चौथा 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 दोस्तों चौथा बाद में बाद चौथा जितने बोर्ड्स हैं समितियां हैं संस्थाएं हैं वो सब और इसे बहुत हैं महत्वपूर्ण हैं अल्पसंख्यक संघ दिल्ली सूरज बोर्ड दिल्ली जल बोर्ड सो मेनी लेबर वेलफेयर बोर्ड वक्फ बोर्ड ऐसे 20 की सूची हमने दी है न्यायालय में उन सब की बजट बनाएगा ये एनसीटी सरकार उनके काम होंगे एन के लिए एन के लोगों के लिए लेकिन उनके अध्यक्ष उनके हेड को वहीं से अपॉइंट होंगे सुपर सीएम या गृह मंत्रालय से पांचवा जो दूरगामी नीतियां हैं सभी सिविल सर्विस के लिए उनके टेन्योर के लिए उनके स्थानांतरण के लिए उनकी नियुक्तियों के लिए कौन सी पोस्ट नाजुक है कौन सी पोस्ट सेंसिटिव नहीं है और उपयुक्त वर्ड इस्तेमाल किया सूटेबिलिटी उपयुक्तता इस अवसर की इस पद के लिए ये सब और हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट कौन होना चाहिए ये सब माननीय सुपर सीएम और अंतर तो गतवा हम जानते हैं कि जो सब चीज करती है नियंत्रण वो होम मंत्रालय हर छोटी चीज के लिए एक हर बड़ी चीज के लिए पूर्ण रूपेण व्यापक निर्बाध टेक ओवर कब्जा 
निर्बाध कब्जा है माननीय प्रधानमंत्री माननीय गृहमंत्री आप जैसे उच्चतम पद पर विराजमान महानुभाव क्या आप अफसर क्लासेस के लिए निचले से निचले से लेके सेक्रेटरी तक नीतियां आप बनाना चाहते हैं कम से कम वो तो एक छोटे अहदे वाले मुख्यमंत्री के पास छोड़ दीजिए सिक्सली फ्रेंड्स द सेक्रेटरी दिस इज अमेजिंग the annals of history of legislation have not seen bills like this the secretary of the department is made in charge of preparing and authenticating every memo including cabinet notes not bad yet disagreements between the secretary and the minister have to be recorded in writing and then sent to the lg and the secretary in the act itself in the bill itself is says that the secretary may write on the note which is sent to the lg why the secretary thinks that the council of ministers is taking a decision contrary to law <laughs> any law <laughs> law means any law any law of india in the opinion of the secretary is being violated by the council of ministers goes to the lg it makes friends the elected government hollow a chief minister paralyzed unable to act any minister shivering before his or her secretary and the bureaucracy looking up to the lg even for sneezing and the lg of course looking up to the home ministry aise halat ko dekh kar mujhe wo purana sher yaad aaya doston ek kafile walon ek kafile walon tum itna bhi nahi samjhe loota hai tumhe rehjan ne rehbar ke ishare par this bill friends eliminates two out of the three interlocking fundamental distinct chains and institutions which form the bedrock of any assembly based democracy and therefore they hit at the very root of the basic structure these three interlocking chains which are discussed in 10 paragraphs of the supreme court judgment i wish somebody had read the judgment carefully before drafting the bill are one a political executive through the council of ministers answerable to the people two a civil service answerable to the political executive and hence accountable to the people through the political executive and regulatory agencies which are an integral part of governance in any system the bill simply eliminates number 2 and 3 out of 3 it takes away 2 friends the object is not to make hamlet the prince of denmark not even the slave of denmark but to take over denmark itself <laughs> it is to make denmark a hollow shell substitute nct for denmark its second impact is that it eliminates the accountability of the civil service completely in doing so it eliminates the very concept of westminster style democracy which delhi is supposed to be fully westminster style minus three subjects only the civil service friends after this bill will jump bend crawl answer at the behest of an external agency be it the home ministry or the super chief minister there is not even a token diarchy of powers between the cm and the lg it converts an impartial civil service into a dictatorial civil service it gives a real example of that forgotten serial which i love to watch and all of you have watched yes minister the civil servant is saying only no minister <coughs> remember what nehru said about the ics that time uh, indian civil service said this is neither indian nor civil nor does it provide service i am not sure how accurately it will apply in 2023 but i think he came very close to it ek mian mein do talwar nahi hai ye case mian bhi lg ke paas hai aur talwar bhi kendra sarkar ke paas hai mukhyamantri ek kone mein khade hokar tamasha dekh sakte hain sir my third head of submission to this august house friends this bill seeks to amend the constitution by an act of parliament the constitution and the debates underlying it all wanted delhi to have all powers minus 3 this bill adds a fourth to those three and it does it magically without a constitutional amendment it is indeed magic even if it is black magic because you can amount, amend a constitution without a constitutional amendment absolutely black fourth 
decimating two out of the three prongs of a Westminster style democracy, which has an answerable and accountable civil service and a regulatory agency, clearly violates the basic structure. Because the basic structure of an assembly based democracy includes these three interlocking chains. I believe that that would be a very likely Supreme Court conclusion if at all this bill is passed. Fifthly, it also violates the basic structure in another manner. The principle of decentralized federal government that has already been a part of the basic structure from the days of Bombay in 1993, around the time, by the way, when 239AA was created. If there is one animating bedrock philosophy underlying 239AA, it is decentralized federal governance. Otherwise, why not keep Delhi as a mere large municipality under central government's control? Advani ji hua karte the bhot bade adhikari aise municipal setup mein pehle. Why not a mere union territory? You know there are ten of them. Delhi is the only one, the only one to have been given the constitutional status by a constitutional amendment. No other union territory. Why? Para 77 of the 2023 judgment partly answers that. I quote, in the spiral of cooperative federalism, the Union of India must exercise its powers within the boundaries created by the Constitution. NCT Delhi, in having a sui generis federal model, must be allowed to function in the domain chartered for it by the Constitution. The Union and the NCT share a unique federal relationship. It does not mean that NCT is subsumed in the Union merely because it is not a state. Ye mere shabd nahi hai, ye uchtam nyayale ke shabd hai. Friends, Delhi alone, out of 10 such territories, was given this constitutional status. Not only because federalism and the aspirations of the people of Delhi were recognized, but the idea was that you will not be able to amend it out of shape, out of character, without a constitutional amendment. You don't have it today. You have a statute. This arrogant government, and this is very interesting, this arrogant government first tried it by invading Delhi's special status in 2016 and 17. Forgotten now, by executive action without even a statute. We argued and we got a 2018 first constitution bench judgment, which struck it down. It did it again by a second notification without a constitutional amendment and lost it and the judgment came in 2023 few months ago. But friends, unfortunately, there is no cap on deliberate foolishness. There is no bar to repetitive constitutional error. They have done this again. This time they have upgraded it from a notification to a statute, but still without a constitutional amendment. And even if this bill is passed, which I am sure it will not be, the result will be the same a third time. History will repeat itself. Friends, constitutional stupidity masquerading as power is by no means a new phenomenon, especially when reason falls on deaf ears. The result is always the same. Zihalat, Himakat, or Nafrat. Samvidhan ka basic structure, dosto, lamo ki baat nahi hai, sadiyon ki baat hai. Aur agar samvidhan ko sadiyan sunegi, lamhe nahi, to hum sab ka uttardai to banta hai, ki hum us samvidhan ki awaz ki hifazat kare. Kyoke adar nahi to, samvidhan cheek cheek kar kahega, mujhe lamhe nahi, sadiyan sunegi, hifazat se meri awaz rakhna. Aaj aap kendra mein hai, मैं आप पार्टी की बात नहीं कर रहा हूं मैं बीजेपी की बात कर रहा हूं आज आप ट्रेजरी बेंच में हैं कल कोई और होगा ये कायम रहेंगे कि ये 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 कायम ये ये कायम ये अच्छा अच्छा किया अच्छा किया आपने हस्तक्षेप किया अच्छा किया आपने हस्तक्षेप किया क्योंकि आपके कायम शब्द के लिए मेरे पास एक जवाब है तुमसे पहले भी वो जो शख्स यहां तख्त नशीन था तुमसे पहले भी जो यहां शख्स तख्त नशीन था उसको भी अपना खुदा होने का इतना ही यकीन था बल्कि बल्कि बशीर भद्र को बशीर भद्र को कृपया भूलिए नहीं आप लोग सब जानते हैं उसको 
मुझे भी कोट करते रहते हैं आप में से कई बशीर बद्र को उसने ही कहा था शोहरत की बुलंदी भी पल भर का तमाशा है शोहरत की बुलंदी भी पल भर का तमाशा तमाशा है जिस डाल पे बैठे हो वो टूट भी सकती है तो इसलिए कायम शब्द का इतना अहंकार नहीं होना चाहिए सिक्सली फ्रेंड्स लेट मी रीड समल वर्ड्स इन द ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री जजमेंट नाउ दीज आर गोइंग टू टेक अट ऑफ टाइम आई इट्स अ लॉन्गेस्ट कोटेशन बट इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर दिस हाउस टेन पैराज एंड आई एम ओनली रीडिंग सेलेक्टिवली ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट इट्स कंप्लीटली फॉगॉट आई रीड लिटिल क्विकली एंड फास्ट दिस इज यूनानिमस जजमेंट नॉट अ सिंगल डिसेंट एंड दीज वर्ड्स बीन इग्नोर्ड एंड दे आर नॉट माई वर्ड्स इवन दो इट्स लॉन्ग पार्ड एन बी अलाउ मी टू रीड इट इट्स द हाइएस्ट कोर्ट ऑफ द कंट्री in a democracy all each word i am reading is a uh, is a quotation and i can assure you these words will come to haunt you in a democracy accountability lies with the people who are the ultimate sovereign the cabinet consisting of elected representatives is collectively responsible for the proper administration of the country and is answerable to the legislature for its actions the government is responsible for the decisions and policies of each of the ministers and of their departments this creates a multi-linked chain of accountability where the legislature is accountable to the people who elected them and the government is collectively responsible to the legislature it's quite amazing collective responsibility is an important component of parliamentary democracies the day to day decisions of the council of ministers are to be implemented by a neutral civil service under the administrative control of the ministers in order to ensure that the functioning of the government reflects the preferences of the elected ministers and through them the will of the people it is essential to scrutinize the link of accountability between the civil service professionals and the elected ministers who oversee them under the westminster parliamentary democracy civil service constitutes an important component of a triple chain of command that ensures democratic accountability har shabd ki dhajjiya uda raha hai bill har shabd ki the triple chain of command is as follows civil service officers are accountable to the ministers ministers are accountable to parliament and thirdly parliament legislature is accountable to the electorate an unaccountable and non responsive civil service may pose a serious problem for governance in a democracy it creates a possibility that the permanent executive consisting of unelected civil service officers who play a decisive role in the implementation of government policy may act in ways that disregard the will of the electorate in a federal polity a fundamental question which arises is which would be the more appropriate authority to whom the civil service officers would be accountable everything which the bill is saying is dealt with here in a democratic form of government only one more para is left friends the real power of administration must reside in the elected arm of the government subject to the confines of the constitution a constitutionally entrenched and democratically elected government needs to have control over its administration if a democratically elected government is not provided with the power to control the officers posted within its domain then the principle underlying the triple chain of command of collective responsibility would become redundant that is to say if the government is not able to control and hold to account the officers posted in service then its responsibility towards the legislature as well as the public is diluted the principle of collective responsibility extends to the responsibility of officers who in turn report to the ministers if the officers stop reporting to the ministers or do not abide by their directions the entire principle of collective responsibility is affected therefore gncd or ought to have control over the services now i know there's a statute i'll deal with their best defense which has been raised by the government but first i have read to you 10 <coughs> paragraphs for those interested from 102 to 111 clearly friends this bill is therefore in the light of these paragraphs still born it does not indeed cannot remove the basis which is this of the unanimous constitution bench judgment these quotations i have just read are bedrock principles this bill is simply providing provisions directly contradicting these bedrock principles it cannot simply nullify a unanimous constitution bench it must at least amount to removing its basis and rendering that judgment inoperable i have just read to you passages which are impossible to remove the basis of these are bedrock principles how do you remove the basis it is therefore trying to overrule directly a supreme court judgment it therefore is an impermissible constitutional exercise if you try to nullify a supreme court judgment without removing its basis it is not only is does this bill insult the people of delhi it insults the supreme court it insults our intelligence she kabhi 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 dil mein khayal aata hai ki jaise 1935 wale government of india act mein chunav zarur rakhe the lekin power nahi rakha tha kuch bhi 
क्या यही कलोनियल मॉडल का आप कार्यान्वित कर रहे हैं आज इस बिल द्वारा हम आपको चुनाव दे रहे हैं पद दे रहे हैं लेकिन पावर नहीं दे रहे इज दिस नॉट एन इलीगल पावर ग्रैब थ्रू द बैक डोर Yes. Now, seventhly, friends, I come to the main defence, the only defence of the government, because you should know this, how wrong and how fallacious it is. It is based on clause seven A and B of the article. Can I just read? None of you need to be lawyers to understand this. The text of the, and you will get the answer automatically. This is the entire defence. Parliament may, by law, make provision for giving effect to or supplementing. Mark the word. for giving effect to or supplementing the provisions contained in the foregoing clauses and for all matters incidental or consequential thereto friends these words on bare text mean that to reinforce operationalize effectuate and implement the earlier provisions which provide the entire architecture for delhi parliament can make laws this was a provision put so that every time something is to be made to fill a gap to plug a hole you don't have to have a constitutional amendment parliament is sufficient to plug that hole to reinforce the delhi's architecture friends the short point is can you destroy or decimate that architecture and structure by resorting to a provision that says that the power is exercisable to reinforce it or implement it ye is pravdhan ke sath vishwasghat nahi hai kya 7a and 7b were created when implementing the true letter of you could reinforce or plug the gaps without amending the constitution it can never be used to destroy to supersede to bury that architecture itself if this ridiculous interpretation is accepted does it mean that by this brute parliamentary majority today you have transferred services to the central government tomorrow you will do this for each item electricity parks highways works board labor board then why not have delhi as a municipality why create the constitutional architecture and that too by using clause 7 which says supplement reinforce implement incidental at the end of para 46 of the 23 23 judgment which nobody appears to have read as far as the bill makers are concerned it says again if we interpret the phrase in so far as such matter is applicable in a manner in so far as such matter is applicable to union territories in a manner to exclude a greater number of entries than what is already excluded that is in addition to 3 it will defeat the very purpose of granting a special status to ncd this is the supreme court in para 46 in other words friend this government like alice in wonderland says words will mean what i say they will mean that's their interpretation of 7 i will use 7 as a brahmastra not to supplement and implement 239 double a but to supplant it to reduce it to vanishing point the scalpel created to heal to cauterize to cure to fill gaps to make you more healthy will now be used to stab <coughs> and kill obviously only alice in wonderland in this government is on the same page on this <laughs> dosto ye sab pravadhan jaise clause 7 hai aur is tarah ke prakar ke pravadhan kai jagah hote hain aam cheez hai लोगों की आवाज को ज्यादा सशक्त बनाने के लिए है विकास और समृद्धि की गति और दिशा को प्रोत्साहित करने के लिए है न कि वोट डालने वाली जनता को निहत्ता बनाने के लिए उसको बेबस करने के लिए इस बिल ने ऐसे सभी उद्देश्यों को अपने माथे पे उल्टा करके लग दिया है संविधान को इस प्रकार से विकृत करेंगे आप तो परवीन शाकर के शब्द पूरी तरह से लागू होंगे ये मेरी गुलजमी ए मेरी गुलजमी तुझे चाहे तु, तुझे चाह थी एक किताब की अब संविधान वाली किताब की बात कर रहे हैं ए मेरी गुलजमी तुझे चाह थी किताब की अहले किताब का मगर क्या तूने हाल कर दिया दोज इन द ट्रेजरी बेंचेस अडॉप्टिंग दिस आर एक्चुअली डिस्टॉटिंग इट आउट ऑफ रिकग्निशन द फंडामेंटल एरर ऑफ द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एंड ऑफ द ऑनरेबल होम मिनिस्ट्री इज टू कन्फ्यूज द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ पावर with the validity of its exercise for the last several days we have been hearing curtain raisers coming from the home ministry that we have the power we are not talking about competence the question is if you have the power its existence is subject to substantive limits see for minutes what you do not have is 
the power to cross, cross the Lakshman Rekha, which this bill is designed to cross. The question of competence to pass a law, which I am not at all addressing here, is quite different from whether the law is a valid exercise of such competence. Not when it violates the basic structure, not when it violates substantive provisions. Friends, the bill is designed to violate specifically all those substantive limits. This is beyond the remit of any statutory bill. Whether even a constitutional amendment can do it, we will see when they bring a constitutional amendment in a fourth round. But the statute being lower than the constitution must go. The constitution is itself challengeable if it violates the basic structure. That stage has not come. Turning now to my eighth head, and I'm finishing very quickly, just give me a few minutes more. It is convenient to forget, and this you'll be interested to know, now that we are having a bill, we tend to forget this. There were no exigent circumstances on 19th of May when you passed the ordinance. The Supreme Court has said in 100 judgments, you must demonstrate how, quote unquote, it is necessary to take immediate action. Immediate necessity is distinguished from mere desirability. These are not my words, they are Supreme Court words. Expression necessity coupled with immediate action conveys the sense that it is imperative due to an emergent situation to promulgate an ordinance. Now I want to tell you, on 11 May, two months ki jire aur behes ke baad, ye constitution bench nirne diya. Chhe din baad, 17 May ko cabinet ne approve kar diya ordinance. Lekin parit nahi kiya, ghoshit nahi kiya. Because they know that they have two days left to sit down for the Uchitam Nyayalaya. The revised time given to you by the LOP was three minutes. Some of my friends here are prepared to donate some time. Thirty minutes. You have left only thirteen minutes for Mr. Chidambaram. Two minutes more. Two minutes more. So you will leave eleven minutes for him? Yes, yes. And there are other people to donate time to us. There are other people. On 19th May... One second, one second. The important... लेजिस्लेशन रहने के ये जरूरी है कि बहस अच्छी हो रही है बहुत दिन के बाद बहुत दिन के बाद बहस अच्छी हो रही है सभी लोगों को सुनने में आ रहा है और नॉलेज नॉलेजेबल है तो आप कंसीडर करिए आपके हाथ में और एक दस मिनट एक्सटेंड कर दीजिए Every minute used by you doctor will cut into the time of Mr. Chidambaram. No. In, in, initially, both were given equal time. Then his time was increased. Go ahead. Last one minute. Satra Tariq ko ye parit ho, ye approve ho gaya cabinet dwara. Isko aap 19 ki shaam ko 5 bhege baad jab mein ghar ja raha tha court se kyon lai? Kyonke aapko malum hai ki 19 Tariq last day tha court ke functioning ka uske baad avkash thi. Kya you wait for two days fearful that the Supreme Court is sitting till 19th May. This is this not cheap tactics and chicanery at its worst? The deleterious, the deleterious effects of this ordinance were visible in the last two or three months it's been there. Governance is at a standstill. Two bureaucrats are threatening to take majority decisions over the chief minister's head. The LG daily trespasses in all domains of elected reps. Heads of bodies funded and operated by NCT are approved and controlled by the Home Ministry. NCT is reduced to a fiefdom of the central government. Insubordination is at its peak. Hamari baat aap sunte mein bas ant kar raha hoon ek minute mein. Hamari baat to aap sunenge nahi, sunte nahi hai. Kam se kam apne maag darshak mandal ki baat to sun liya kabhi. Ya kabhi kabhi unse baat karte hai, poochte hai, unko bhi bhul gaya aap mein. Maag darshak mandal se baat kar lijiye, kyaunke aap ki sarkar, Bharat Ratna Atal Bihari Vajpai ki sarkar, mein aap ke maag darshak Grih Mantri Adwani ji, दिल्ली को पूरा स्टेटहुड जाने का बिल लाए थे और जब आप दो चुनाव दिल्ली के जीते इस मुद्दे पे कि दिल्ली के पास पूरा स्टेटहुड होना चाहिए तो मदनलाल खुराना जी आपके पूर्व मुख्यमंत्री ने कहा था कोट फुल स्टेटहुड फॉर दिल्ली इज द रेमेडी फॉर ऑल इट्स इल्स आज देश और दिल्ली आपसे फुल स्टेटहुड नहीं मांग रहा है आज सिर्फ वो इतना विनती कर रहा है कि जितना बाएं हाथ दाएं हाथ ने संविधान ने दिया है उतना बाएं हाथ से तो नहीं लीजिए इतनी छोटी सी विनती कर रहा है जहां तक दुख और आक्रोश का सवाल है ये एक दुखद और खतरनाक प्रस्तावित कानून है दोस्तों अंत करूंगा मैं ये कहकर कि ये दिल्ली के बारे में शेर बिल्कुल उपयुक्त बैठा था है ये बिल ये प्रस्तावित कानून 
چہرے پہ سارے شہر کے چہرے پہ سارے شہر کے گرد ملال ہے جو دل کا حال ہے وہی دلی کا حال ہے دکھ اور آکروش کا حال ہے ڈاکٹر سدان سو تریویدی ٹوینٹی منٹس